going to call the meeting to order and we're going to do a roll call. I am here. Betty Ackley. Here. Dean Decker. Here. Leslie Laster. Here. Amanda Salazar is excused. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll do an introduction of who's around the table here. Um, I'm Barb Feldy, the chair. Betty Ackley, District 4 Alder Person. Dean Decker, District 6 Alder Person. Chris Domogolski, Police Chief. Eric Montiano, Fire Chief. Kathy Hoffman, City Attorney's Office. Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Brian Sorensen, Concerned Citizen. Great. Um, approval of minutes from March 2nd, 2020, 2022. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve. Second. All, uh, any nays? Okay. Leslie, are you in favor? Yes. Thank you. Um, chair votes. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Kind of jumped ahead there. It's okay. Um, number six, a resolution. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Resolution number 150-2122-3722. Resolution establishing the Mayor's Youth Advisory Council MYAC. So that's why I'm here today. I, I tried to rearrange the lettering, lettering so it would say YMCA, but <laughs> that, that didn't flow grammatically. Um, so, so this is just a new, um, I always hate you know, creating new committees, but this is a new committee of sorts. Um, so there's, there's a few other cities across Wisconsin um, that have what are called youth advisory councils um, in di different varieties of names. Um, it, it's primarily a tool to engage young young uh, students in high school, primarily to get them more involved with, with local government, understanding what goes on uh, from a local government perspective. Um, sometimes we can have them work on small projects or initiatives within the city, um, bring them together, kind of create skills, resume builder. Um, our closest neighbor, Manitowoc, um, has this. So I essentially copied and pasted, tweaked it a little bit. Um, so it fits Sheboygan. Um, the Green Bicycle Company has, has done what is called a cultural asset mapping project with the Art Center. And this is one of their recommendations as well. Um, um, and some of their interns presented a while back at a meeting. Um, um, and this was one of the recommendations. So uh, wanted to get this rolling for the new council uh, that I believe in the or the resolution it just kind of states that the term for this committee will be the school year, so I think that's September through June. Um, so that's what the concern is. So you're not really planning on having it up and running until September then? Yeah, and then uh, just want to kind of create contacts and some staff, you know, a point of contacts in the school so we can start finding students. So. Great. I'm a, I, I think this is awesome. I think this is a really, this is kind of to engage our youth. I mean, I, I remember when we had that group that was here that they were asking things like that. It was just, it was, it was neat to, to, to listen to their questions. I think it, to engage the students and get them. I mean, it, this is how you get people to, to, to be, so we have future alders and future mayors and things like that to come forward. I mean, without this, you, you, you know, where, where, where does that pipeline come from? Yeah, I think this is this is a really great idea. Any other comments, Leslie? Any? Nope, I'm in full support. All right, great. You want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Chair approves, and motion carried. Thank you. Sure. RO number 131-21-22-7-3722, submitting the annual report for the City of Sheboygan Fire Department for the year. Take it away. Okay, well, thank you. And um, 
good afternoon. So this is just a real quick PowerPoint on our uh, some of the highlights from our annual report from 2021. So in 2021, uh, we hired three new firefighters, uh, firefighter paramedics, I should say. We had three promotions uh, due to some of the retirements, and actually uh, we had four retirements. So as you can see, um, really there was a lot of seniority, a lot of years uh, that we lost due to the retirements. Uh, we are becoming a, a much younger department, but uh, in a way that's good as well. We have a lot of young, eager uh, individuals willing to learn and they're mobile and trainable. So that's great. Um, also, we in initiated our very first uh, Citizen Spire Academy, which was a huge success. We had 11 participants. Uh, as I, I know, I showed the uh, uh, slide presentation a, a few, um, several meetings ago, but uh, we had 11 participants uh, make, making up from the public city staff and some alders. So it was great to see. Uh, we will be doing another one this fall. We also received approval to purchase a new fire engine replacing our uh, ladder five, uh, which is a quint. Uh, it unfortunately did not pass its annual inspection and due to its age, uh, we have to replace it. So we're thankful we got approval on that. And then we've be, uh, begun to work with um, the Department of Public Works, uh, other members of the city, um and uh short elliot hendrickson as our architect company to look at a remodel or construction uh plan for our headquarters station station number three so that started uh last year as well um some some highlights from our incidents um so we ended up in 2021 with 6299 incidents which was 636 more than in the 2020. So our trend is continuing, as you can see, over the last uh, five years. Um, we are trending upwards, uh, which is in line with the national standards as well as statistics. Um, this slide here is just is a breakdown of the last five years of what we categorize as fires. Uh, rescue EMS calls or medical calls and then non fires, all the other type of incidents. Uh, one thing to note in here is that in 2017 under fires uh, we had a huge uh, there's like a discrepancy there 125 that's because our national fire incident reporting system what we report to the feds uh, they changed the criteria for building fires so that changed so um, you know things like uh, uh, burnt, burnt uh, food or uh, that kind of calls were classified as structure fires back in the day now they're not so that's why the 125 versus you know 90s less than 100 so big big change there but this just gives you our trends over the years you can see uh, again the number of calls uh, continuing to kind of increase throughout the years this next slide is a uh, little breakdown here of our calls per station and what this is is just our percentages of those 6299 calls what 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 are the station where you know the, where they had where it came in as so for example station one is our busiest with 28 percent of the calls uh and then station five just because of the development and, and its location only covers about nine percent of the calls but they would still for fires go throughout the whole city it doesn't mean that they don't respond but those are the initial calls in their district the next uh this next uh one is about the calls by day, so it pretty pretty average amongst all of them. And they're almost equal. So uh, Friday still remains our busiest, but it's really not extremely you know busier than Monday, for example. But it is a little more than the others. Okay, this next uh, one is just breaking down the calls by hours, and you can kind of see from uh, like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's our busiest time, roughly. Uh, so it's it's typical across the country. So here, uh, this is what we refer to as our mutual aid calls, our calls into the city or our calls out of the city. And you will see that um, over since 2018, um, 2021 or 2020 was kind of a unique because of COVID. We went out of the city way, way, way more um, than normal only because of, you know the COVID responses and a lot of ambulance calls 
um, but re really we're pretty much in line. Uh, we receive a little less help than we give, but that's to be expected with the volunteer fire departments throughout the county and us being the only career department and the majority of the ambulance calls, we help Orange Cross out. So it's to be expected. Okay, this here is just an example of all our uh, overlapping incidents, our fire investigation and our ISO rating. So 44% of our incidents, so that's 6,299, 44% of those are overlapping incidents. And what I mean by that is calls occurring while another call is already existing. So we get toned out right now, 10 minutes later, we get another call, that's an overlapping incident. Some of them could be multiple overlap, meaning that we have four calls going on at once. Um, so that's what an overlapping incident. Our fire investigation, uh, we we've, we've, uh, completed 84 fire investigation uh, throughout 2021. And truly the only federal standard we have, the federal law is the fire chief is responsible uh, for determining cause and origin of a fire. It's kind of funny to say, we don't even need to put the fires out, uh, but we just need to determine the cause and origin. That's federal law, but obviously we, we don't do that, we do more. Um, isolating, so insurance service office, uh, in case you're not familiar with that, uh, the insurance companies uh, use this ISO rating for throughout the country for municipalities to determine what rates to charge for certain, um, for commercial buildings or residents. So currently we are an ISO class two here in the city. ISO class one is the best. Um, actually, we just had a meeting this afternoon with our ISO rep for the state of Wisconsin, and uh, we'll be looking at doing another survey in 2024 to see if we can increase that. Uh, usually this is determined by our communication center, the water supply within the city, and the fire department and training hours. Um, they added a new category, uh, community uh, risk reduction, uh, which is basically the Fire Prevention Bureau. So we, we did very, very well in that. Um, and we will continue to do so, but we're hoping to get down to a class one, which would impact uh, the premiums that uh, residents and business owners pay, which is, would be a good thing if we, if we drop to a one. Uh, this next slide here is just some of those uh, non-fire related calls. So you'll see the, just, it, it really, what non-rescue incidents or other fires are, it could be gas leaks, carbon monoxide, you see a list on the left there. That little pie chart just shows you the percentage of the calls. Um, good intent calls 19%. Those are calls that people call that really don't have, fit in a cat. Of maybe they they smell something funny, but it's not gas. And so we'll come out there. It, it could be a skunk. It could be something like that. But they're worried about something being in their house. We go to a system. Those are good good intent calls. Um, so and, yep. And then the one thing that we're very proud of during our surveys, uh, the city survey, still have 99% resident satisfaction. So yay on that. <laughs> um, all right, and you never want that 100% because it always gives you something to strive for, right? <laughs> Just my little theory. 99.5. Huh? Um, this next slide here is our emergency medical services. So again, in 2021, responded to over 4,800 EMS calls, which is which is 500 more. Yes, you were 500 more than the previous year, um, and. Some of the few uh, notes just, we implemented a new response, uh, which added another, uh, like a second fire engine or the ladder truck to respond to cardiac arrest, would, because these are, and other calls like this, but these are very uh, labor intensive incidents. Uh, so we needed, we wanted to add the extra help to give the paramedics a chance and a, a successful outcome for the patient. Um, so that, that helps increase that. And that little picture to the right there is what we call a video laryngoscope. So when a person is not breathing, we can insert this tube to a system in breathing. This video now, it allows us to see the vocal cords and the points where we that insert that uh, tube in there. So the success rate is much higher. In the past, we had to do it blindly by looking and, and doing the best we can. This will actually have the camera go into your esophagus and we can see the trachea and all that. So better outcome. Um, part of our operations, we uh, respond on a lot of unique calls, uh, specialized calls. 
Uh, and this also includes responding out in the county uh, for such things as the hazmat, uh, uh, hazmat incident, uh, dive incident, or technical rescue. Uh, so we do a lot of training with the county and we do a lot of in-house training uh, because they are um, what we call high risk, low frequency events. And all that means is that these type of calls don't happen often, but they are very, very labor intensive and technical. So we have to do a lot of training on that. Uh, speaking of training, we do a lot throughout the year. Um, some of these categories you see on the left uh, included you know, our confined space, which again is a technical thing. We train on hose all the time, hose pulls, uh, water flow, uh, water rescue, hazmat. Um, so a lot of different training throughout the year. And that pie chart just shows you what kind of uh, what our percentage of the training hours that we do. Um, administrative could be, you know, anything from, you know, paperwork kind of stuff or uh, how we speak on the radio and how to deal with incidents as incident command and stuff. So um, then we talk about our apparatus. Uh, some of the highlights and equipment of our apparatus is uh, we did our five year hydrostatic testing on all our SCBA cylinders, uh, which we have a lot of on the department. Uh, so that was uh, quite a feat. Um, we did our 25-year-old uh, our hydraulic extrication equipment was replaced. We actually went to a more modern, what we call e-tools, which are battery operated. Um, technology has changed considerably. So now we can use regular batteries that you would use in like your salt, your cordless drill at home. You know, that's what we use on these, and, but yet the technology has changed. So you can still get a lot of power out of them. So that's good. Um, we uh, t continue to uh, replace our gear. Um, we were on a replacement program, so we were able to purchase 10 sets of turnout gear for our, our personnel. Uh, our rescue boat, the inflatable that we use for ice rescue was replaced. Uh, so we bought a new one of that. And then we had some, believe it or not, 40 year old hose that we still use that was still in service that we finally replaced, which is a great thing because now they're lighter and, and uh, composite so they don't, uh, rot as easily as in the past. Uh, so fire prevention is one of our, our most important aspects of the fire service. This is where we are able to educate the public on fire safety. We were uh, into the schools again after the back to you know the COVID release. Um, so we, we were able to uh, see 3,148 area students. Um, and these range anywhere from kindergarten to uh, fourth grade. Um, they would meet the firefighters, obviously do, uh, see what we wear as far as our turnout gear, do exit drills, planning exit drills, uh, stop, drop and roll. Um, this is all done and then they, they end up by being able to what we, we call our survive a live house. It's a big, huge uh, camper that they, all the skills that they learned uh, then they, they practice and then they're able to exit the house because we fill it with the theater smoke and then they're able to practice calling 911 to get the help, you know, how you would do it if it was your house. So that's a successful program that we like, we enjoy doing. Um, speaking of fire inspections as well, we installed this graph here shows how many smoke alarms we installed. Uh, obviously, this number hopefully will decrease continuously as we go on. Um, but we will always assist. So we will, if a uh, homeowner or resident cannot install them themselves, we will install them for them. Um, and then we also do some inspections, obviously, throughout the year. And so this graph just shows from 2017 through 2021, we continue to improve our inspection program, getting into the buildings as much as possible. So 20, over 2,200 uh, inspections last year which in 2017, we were only at 1,800, so quite a jump. So we're doing well. Um, and then finally, as I mentioned, that Citizens Fire Academy, um, the individuals learned everything about our history, what we do as a fire department, what our firefighters do in this community. They were able to try on the equipment, utilize uh, the, some of the uh, um, stuff that we do, extrication equipment, perform search and rescues, uh, you know, breathing through the SCBA, our, our self-contained uh, breathing apparatus, and then basically get to know the crews. A very successful program, and we're excited to do our second one this fall.
that is my presentation. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Otherwise, thanks for your time. Any questions? You did a good job. Nobody has any questions. <laughs> That's a short sweet. That's what I like. <laughs> Everybody looks nice today. I don't know about short. <laughs> All right. Motion. Oh. Uh, motion to accept the report. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. RO number 130, 21, 22, 37, 22, submitting the annual report showing the activity of the police department for the period commencing January 1, 2021 and ending December 31st, 2021. Take it away, Chief. Okay, good evening. So the report is on Municode um, and everybody has it. Um, there's obviously quite a bit of information in there, so I'm not gonna go over all of it. Um, I would hit some highlights. Um, so in 2021, we saw a reduction in part one crimes with 841 reported. Um, you've heard some of this already, but that's in comparison to 973 in 2020 and 945 in 2019. And then looking longer term, we did a comparison um, from 2012. So 841 in 2021 and 1,690 in 2012. So that equates to a 50% um, reduction over that 10 year period there. Um, we also continue to see a positive trend in motor vehicle accidents last year with 1,365, which is much higher than we'd like to see it, but in comparison to past years, it's, it's a good reduction for us. Um, and last night, the mayor was part of our Citizens Academy in class. And so we showed some statistics going farther back um, if you look at the early 2000s, um, we had as many as double that, 2,660 accidents in the city. And so as I've talked about at past meetings, um, I think right now it's more challenging than ever because people are A, more distractive and drive much more aggressively. Um, but we've tried to do a, a great deal and we'll continue to try to do that um, with our messaging and educating the public and trying to mix that with um, the enforcement that we do. Um, I mentioned it at the at the last meeting, and I'll mention it again. One of the big challenges that we face is trying to find the, the resources to do traffic enforcement in the way that we have in the past because of the number of calls that we get sent to regarding both mental health issues and um, alcohol and drug abuse issues. Um, so we've put together um, some partnerships that we hope will move forward. Um, to address that more. Um, so there's proposals with the county um, for the county to, to put um, a crisis worker in the dispatch center to try to take some of those calls off right there. Um, and then there's also a proposal to try to put um, social workers in bed in the, in the police department to go along with us to some of these calls to try to make better connections with people to services. Um, so hopefully some of that will happen going forward. And if that does I, I'm pretty excited about that. I think there's some good possibilities of, of developing better relationships with some of the people that need help and then having their resources really to follow up and make sure those connections happen. Um, some of the other big things that happened is we replaced six officers last year and seven professional staff. So um, more than 10% of the staff. So that's a, a um, big task for us. Um, but we've seen a lot of positive things out of that. So I'm excited about that. Um, and we've continued to build some stronger relationships in um, our collaborative relationships. So things like the drug court program, which is a, a collaboration between law enforcement, health and human services, the DA's office, the judges, probation and parole, public defenders, and the detention center. Um, has continued uh, to move forward in, in a good fashion and we've seen some real success out of that program. So I'm excited that that's continuing to move forward. And then one of the partnerships that's mentioned in the report that I'd like to highlight is our partnership with the Child Advocacy Center. So this is a center that started um, 
with a partnership between three counties, Sheboygan, um, Washington, and Ozaki, and the center is located in Sockville. Um, of um, the use of that center, about 60% comes from the city of Sheboygan. Um, so there's been a real push to try to get those services closer to the city so that we're not having to travel. Um, and so uh, something that we did two years ago was essentially offer them some space in our building so that they could deliver some of those services right from our building A to make it more um, convenient for us, but really more convenient for the citizens so that they can come right to the police. Uh, so the Child Advocacy Center is trying to um, raise the funds to, to have their own center in the city of Sheboygan. And uh, I'm encouraged that that's gonna happen. Um, they've also um, started some new partnerships with some other counties. So Manitowoc would be one of those, which really, again, helps push it north too. So um, hopefully that continues. But last year they did 185 child interviews um, right out of our police department. So we're excited about, about that. Um, otherwise, a lot of it was really trying to, to get back to the things that have helped us to be successful that were interrupted during the pandemic. And a lot of that goes to um, some of the things that like Citizens Academy and community barbecues and cleanups and that outreach. Um, so that's not at the level that we would have liked it to be last year, but we're excited about the opportunity to, to expand that again this year. So that's really all I have for you at this point, unless you have questions. I have a question. Um, the social workers, um, are you finding that hard to get anybody because I know they're kind of short always with social workers in, in the county. So is that a problem for you? So I think that could potentially be a problem if it gets approved. And that's why they're looking at, you know, pushing the date back a little bit. Um, right now, I believe the only thing that is actually posted is that I won't get this right, but they're essentially trying to hire um, a psychologist that would be a behavioral supervisor for the for the programs over there. And they've had some problems attracting a person to that position. Um, so that's an ongoing task for them. Um, I, I like the idea that the psychologist, um, not that I'm opposed to the social worker, whatever you can get will help. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah. You consider maybe retirees? Uh, I think they're they're considering all kinds of. <laughs> 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 I'm done with that. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, and I think there's even some some people that work for some of the programs either within the county or for VistaCare it would would be the contractor that they would be working with. That that might consider moving from their current positions into the into the field. That that's one way they might be able to do it, but they would still have to backfill and replace those positions. So, so, so how would this exactly would would the social would the um, officers go to the scene, or would you would they would they identify it right away on the call when the call comes into the call center, or would you would, we, would you have the officers kind of go to the scene and assess the situation and say, I think we need them here, or how? So to, so to start out with, we've identified the peak hours where the calls would happen. Mm -hmm. And so those are those times that the social workers would be working about 16 hours a day okay. at this point. And what we would do is, what we would do is rotate it, but they would get assigned with one officer. Okay. And then that squad would get sent priority to these types of calls. Okay. Um, and to start out with, they'd be embedded, they'd be in the squad with the officers going. And the reason for that is really twofold, kind of builds to skills and the knowledge base both ways. Sure. But I think one of the things right now that um, kind of holds this this kind of response from going forward is that that there's a fear um, by some of the workers and a fear in, in the community that sending a social worker to these some of these calls is either inappropriate or too dangerous. And okay. that's, that's really not true. Uh, most of the people that they're yep. dealing with are dangerous. If, if they were dangerous, they wouldn't be in their residences where they are. There would be other places yep. that we would have them. Um, and so somebody who's suicidal or, yeah. <laughs> Mo most people that are suffering from depression or something like that aren't to the point where they're actively committing suicide. 
Yeah. We're trying to get to them before they hit that crisis point. Yeah. And then even when they get to that crisis point, most of those people aren't looking to do harm to somebody else. They're looking to do harm to themselves. Um, and so what their intent is or their, their manner of carrying that out is really what creates uh, the danger or the risk. So I think by at least starting them out with police officers, there's that feeling of greater safety until they can get comfortable and we can get the training in place for dispatchers to be able to differentiate between which, which calls they should just be sending them and which they should be sending a call, call response. So some of that I think is just building that knowledge base over time. Yeah, but I was going to say, as, as it happens, they'll, they'll figure it out. Then. Yeah, and I think really it's really the same concept of putting that, that crisis worker um, call taker in the dispatch center. Is the dispatchers are really trained to send either law enforcement or EMS or the fire department to these calls. They're not trained to do other things. And so that's really their first response. And so having somebody else there that's used to um, taking these calls and can identify, well, wait on that one, let me try that one. Um, and then those dispatchers getting that kind of experience it is really, I think, a, a key to, to making this successful, that experience base. I hope you can find somebody. Yeah, I, I hope think this works out. I really, this is, I think this is great yeah. program. something that really, this is, this is one of the recommendations uh, with the ARPA. Yeah, I have another question. Um, there's two beat officers. Um, what areas did beat officers cover? Where are they? Um, without a neighborhood map, I'm not going to be able to tell you, but it's north and on south the north side. side. Yeah. It's it's south. The north side, it's around Keeney Court. Um, okay. Maple Heights. Maple yeah. Heights, uh, right in that area. I would tell you the south side. That, that they're <laughs> focusing on. Um, and then on the south south side it's that franklin park franklin neighborhood in yeah. king park yeah. franklin park it's always the indiana, indiana yeah. corridor um, they get work it, through get all it this. up there you know okay they do a wonderful part? job though because yeah, they, they really are the neighborhood meetings and they help provide information to citizens that we wouldn't know otherwise yeah and it's really handy to have them i'm glad we have them and it's it's, it's really a, a advocacy for the we you have to for the police department mm -hmm. it really helps the, the citizens i think you know I know, to connect with them. Does some great do jobs with the, yeah. um, you know, the lunches uh, in the park, and yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. Okay, any other questions? Okay, we need a motion. Take a motion to accept the report. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Did we lose Leslie? Hi. <laughs> okay, opposed? Uh, chair votes aye. All in favor? RO number 132-21-22-3722, submitting a license application. Only thing on there is a temporary change of premises for Denny's Bar, and we're recommending approving it for a one-day event. Motion to approve that. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion approved. Um, now we're to the next meeting date will be March 30th, 2022. And motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Great. Everybody have a great evening.